This is Chemical Processes for Micro and Nano Fabrication. I'm Chris Mack, and this is Lecture 64, the second part of our two part series on nano imprint lithography. Last time we talked about some of the advantages of imprint lithography. It's relatively inexpensive and relatively easy to get fairly high resolution. Now, it took uh, a lot of work to get to uh, sub 100 nanometer resolution with optical lithography, much less work was required to get to those kinds of resolutions with imprint lithography, and people have even demonstrated 10 nanometer resolution. So it's, it's very high resolution capability, and it can be used for mass production. We can print over fairly large areas and print very quickly. Now, it's not that there's only good things to say about imprint, though. There's some significant drawbacks, too. The main disadvantage of imprint lithography is defects. Well, at least it's a disadvantage for those processes that are sensitive to defects. There are some processes that are inherently not very sensitive to small defects, and for those applications, imprint is almost perfect. But there are some processes, in particular semiconductor manufacturing, where even one small defect is enough to kill an entire chip. There, we must get our defect densities extremely low if we want to use imprint lithography, and that's a real challenge. Another problem is overlay. If your application does not require one pattern to be aligned and overlaid on top of another pattern, well then again, imprint is a very nice way to go. But there are some applications, for example, semiconductor manufacturing, where we need very tight overlay tolerances. Our ability to print one pattern on top of another uh, has to match within a few nanometers. That's very difficult to do with imprint, although we have some solutions. Throughput is generally very high for imprint lithography for many applications, but in semiconductor manufacturing we're used to extremely high throughputs. You might recall that 193 immersion scanners can print at 240, 300 millimeter wafers per hour. That's very, very fast throughput. And it's hard for even a high throughput technology like imprint lithography to keep up with. And then the template. Making the template is hard. Uh, <clears throat> of course, making any photo mask is hard as well, but for imprint lithography, our templates are 1x. That is, the features on the template are the same dimensions as the features that we are printing on the substrate. In projection lithography, we use 4, 5, or 10x, although 4x is the most common today, and that means the patterns that we're printing on the photo mask are four times bigger. Well, that's significantly easier. Um, easier to do the printing, easier to get tight control over the feature sizes and the uh, registration, the positioning of those patterns. Um, much easier to do at 4x than at 1x. So 1x template manufacturing is another big challenge. Let's look at a few of these um, problems, and I'll specifically talk about them as they would relate to the use of imprint lithography for semiconductor manufacturing. Again, for other applications, some of these problems may not be that big of a problem. For, here's defects. Now, defects can always occur in any processing step. Um, dirt, particulate matter can land on the substrate. It could be uh, defects, um, particulates inside of the materials that you coat onto the wafer all kinds of sources of defects, and semiconductor manufacturers are used to these sources of defects and how to deal with them. But imprint adds a few extra problems. Because we're imprinting a template into a material directly on the wafer, when we pull off, we worry about some bit of resist sticking to the template. And that bit of resist then will print the next time we bring the template down. If I damage the template at all, well, that can cause defects. And then we can also have problems like this uh, no-fill case where the liquid didn't get all the way up into some small gap or opening in the template. In fact, it might have been a bubble uh, that uh, stayed there, and as a result, uh, we have a spot that doesn't get printed because there was no liquid resist in the template. So we have both 
common defect sources that are common to all areas of manufacturing, and then specific defect problems uh, ap that apply to imprint lithography. And it's those specific ones that are uh, the challenging ones for imprint. There's also the problem of overlay. And one aspect of overlay is magnification correction. Now, I print a pattern onto a wafer, and then I come in with a template, and I want to print a second pattern on top of the original pattern. Over the course of processing, the size of the wafer can change. If the temperature of, of the wafer changes just a little bit, um, if we went through some processing steps where uh, the wafer expanded and contracted, it may not contract back to its original size exactly. And small temperature variations mean uh, a substrate with the thermal expansion coefficient different than the template uh, will cause differences in the size. This is called a magnification error. And it's one aspect of an overlay error that can occur when we print one pattern on top of another. Well, how do we fix this? In optical projection lithography, we have some optical knobs that we can turn that change the magnification. So we can make a measurement, see that we're off by a little bit, and make an adjustment. How can you make such an adjustment with imprint lithography? Well, there is a way. You can use mechanical changes to the template. I can squeeze or stretch the template with some mechanical forces. This is an approach that's been um, used by molecular imprints and different amounts of pressure at different points along the outside of the template allow the magnification to be adjusted and in fact uh, allow some higher order uh, variations in overlay to be adjusted as well. Another problem is throughput. Well, as I said, imprint lithography is a relatively high throughput process, but in the semiconductor world, it's competing with an extremely high throughput process. So what limits the throughput in nano imprint lithography? Well, we have a certain field size. Typically, we try to make the field size about the same as the other field sizes in semiconductor manufacturing. Then we have the time it takes to dispense the fluid, push the template into the fluid, exposed with UV light, and then pull the template off. Well, if we try to go too fast, we can cause defects. Either if we push down too fast, the fluid doesn't have a chance to fill into all the holes. If we peel up too fast, then uh, we can cause defects uh, and um, uh, especially material that sticks to the template. Um, there are some things we can do. The imprint heads are pretty small and cheap. We can, we can quickly dispense lots of the fluid around. Um, but we have to really optimize all the materials and all the mechanical processes of pushing down and lifting up to, to be able to do this at a maximum speed. We could um, have lots of print heads and, and print um, multiple wafers at once, but that requires multiple templates, and the templates are not cheap. Uh, and so we have to worry about how can we reproduce templates so that they are inexpensive. We tend to make one master template, then reproduce it with daughter templates, and those daughter templates are used in the actual imprinting of the wafer. Nano imprint is being considered for semiconductor manufacturing. And as a matter of fact, uh, Toshiba has been working on a project to try to see if nano imprint would be capable of meeting the specifications of semiconductor manufacturing. They're, they hope to have an answer in a couple of years. Here's a, a recent snapshot of the status uh, where uh, the green items are those things meeting spec, and the yellow are almost there, and the reds still have problems. And you can see by the red that the biggest problem is defectivity. Currently, uh, at least as of two years ago, the defectivity was on the order of 10 defects per square centimeter. But for manufacturing, we need something like 0.1 defects per square centimeter, at least uh, flash manufacturing. 
uh, which is the application being considered here. So we have two orders of magnitude to go. There's been some progress uh, on this in the last two years, and hopefully more progress will be made in the next two years. And maybe, just maybe, nano imprint lithography will be a viable solution for semiconductor manufacturing. But if not, there are other applications for nano imprint besides semiconductor manufacturing where they are, it is being considered and in fact sometimes being used now. Uh, nano imprint can print small features. Um, it can also be used to print things like lenslets, little bitty lenses in an array, which have some interesting applications. It can be used to print more complicated patterns uh, with, with uh, multiple steps in the topography. It doesn't have to print just one step size. And as a result, there are some interesting applications possible. One application that's uh, getting very, very uh, a lot of attention is bit pattern media. As we all know, hard drives in our computers store lots of information. And the, the density of storage, the ability to store up to uh, hundreds of gigabytes gigabits, excuse me, hundreds of gigabits per square inch um, is really quite remarkable. And we use magnetic media with a head that reads and writes uh, the direction of, of the magnetic um, uh, field stored in these magnetic media. Well, typically we've, we've taken a magnetic media and, and uniformly coded it onto a platen and then uh, divided that up into tracks and, and bits, little bit cells, and then read and writ, written those bit cells with the magnetic fields. Well, the problem is we make these cells smaller and smaller, they start influencing each other and they become unreliable. That is, um, one bit would spontaneously flip from a one to a zero flip its direction of the magnetic field because of the influence of just thermal energy and, and the neighbors uh, around it. And so we're running at the limits as to how far we can shrink these bit cells on our hard disks. One approach is to use a bit pattern media. Instead of a uniform coating of magnetic material over the disk, we have little pillars of magnetic materials. Uh, each pillar is separated physically in space from the pillar next to it, and that way they influence each other less, and we can pack our bits more densely together. We want to be able to get something down to uh, on the order of 10 nanometers for the size of these pillars, or a 20 nanometer pitch. Well, that's very challenging to pattern, uh, and uh, as you may know, hard disks aren't very expensive terabyte, few terabytes of hard disk storage is, you know, 100 bucks. It's really, really inexpensive. So we can't spend a lot of money uh, making this bit pattern media. Imprint lithography is a possible solution because it's inexpensive. We don't have to worry about alignment. And it's a little bit tolerant to defects. The thing about uh, hard disks is uh, once you first make your hard disk and you format the disk, you can find every bit that's malfunctioning, tag it, and simply not use it. So if you have, you know, 1% um, defective bits, that's still an acceptable hard disk. Uh, so it's much less uh, sensitive to defects. It's not sensitive, very sensitive to overlay. And as a result, uh, it's a very, very uh, viable application for nano imprint. Maybe we'll see it in the coming years in commercial products. It's being investigated now. People are using it for patterning things like photonic crystal waveguides, um, where uh, a textured or patterned uh, material like glass has unique properties depending on how it's patterned or textured. Um, people are using it to pattern the surface of a wafer when making a light emitting diode to maximize the amount of light that can escape out of the semiconductor and into the air. There's all kinds of very interesting applications for nanotextured uh, surfaces. And so there's 
become quite a lot of uh, commercial systems out there to do nano imprint lithography. Here are a couple that do uh, thermal imprint. These are uh, very flexible R&D kinds of machines that can do thermal imprint, uh, UV uh, nano imprint, and some combined uh, thermal and UV. Um, then we have the molecular imprints tools which are geared uh, towards high volume manufacturing rather than R&D. They use the UV step and flash or jet and flash approach. They have tools for the uh, hard drive industry um, and for the semiconductor industry um, and for LED manufacturing and other applications as well. So let's look at what we've learned in lecture 64, the second part of our series on nano imprint lithography. What are the main advantages of nano imprint lithography? What are the main disadvantages of nano imprint lithography? How many applications of nano imprint lithography can you name? Well, there's still other interesting kinds of uh, nano patterning, nano fabrication technologies out there. We're going to talk about another one next time. Till then.